Louisville Cardinals softball still undefeated at 20-0 with a couple of victories over the weekend in their own tournament. This is Sandy Pearsall. I'm Sean Moth. Great to see you again. We, uh, we host a tournament, we being the Cardinals softball team. Uh, you, I guess, more appropriately, <laughs> as I have nothing really to do with it. But uh, you guys have St. Louis, Michigan, and Illinois State in town. And uh, if you just kind of look at the results, the first inning seems to be a real key for your team. As we go to that first game, I think you put six on the board against St. Yeah. Louis, and you just jumped right on them. Yeah, interestingly enough, we've been a little better about getting ahead right away, and then, but we do kind of then cruise a little too much for my liking. Um, but I guess it's better than the alternative of what we were doing earlier, where we would wait till the end to all of a sudden turn it on and come from behind. So it's a little nicer in that sense. But yeah, I've been impressed that we've come right out and just been very aggressive in attacking. You knew the most competitive game of the weekend would be Michigan. The Wolverines, historically, a great program. And uh, they've been to a number, uh, number of times they've been to Oklahoma City. I think they were ranked 14th coming in. And boy, you guys get into a battle. And that's one thing I've been impressed about is there have been some 11 to 1 mercy rule games. There have been some tight games that you've won late. And this is another one, a 2 1 victory over the Wolverines. Yeah, you know, probably not necessarily. Michigan's having some woes in their offense right now. Um, and they're a little down offensively, maybe in some ways. But boy, that pitcher on the mound for them did a great job. She jammed us more than any kid has ever jammed us. Yeah. And in a very, very long time. And um, we had to really struggle and battle to get those two runs. And, uh, you know, we did. You know, Jordy Trimble coming through, you know, Caitlin Mann. We had some key people come through for us because they really jammed us up pretty hard in that game. We go to St. Louis for a second time, and then sometimes that can be a concern when you see a team for another opportunity. And yeah. again, you, you guys jump out and get a few runs in the first inning, and that, that certainly makes things a lot easier as you guys yeah. get, I think, a 9-2 victory over the Billikens. Yeah, you know, a little slow, I, and I, I was concerned. I was concerned actually the first day that we would overlook St. Louis yeah. thinking to get to Michigan and made it quite clear we couldn't do that. And the great part about the whole thing is we didn't do that. And the yeah. next day, though, I thought, okay, we might have a little letdown. And we sat around and waited for a very long time to play because the game ahead of us went extra innings. And we sure. were a little sluggish, but we, we still got it done and, and, and still found a way to continue to put pressure on other teams. And it seems like your team's the chameleon-esque, if you will. They've done a nice job. They've, they've had to adapt to a lot of different situations. Mm -hmm a lot of different types of games and and you see even though there is some youth on the team that it's a pretty resilient team and a pretty mature team that's been able to handle a lot of those outside circumstances yeah great leadership um, I think great confidence in this team now uh, I think anytime you can start the season in the first few weeks just coming out hitting the ball winning games coming from behind those kind of things build such character in your team and such confidence level that they're not so rattled by things and they don't go, oh, I hope we can get this done. They just go, we'll get it done. And, you know, to go undefeated all year would be obviously yeah. unbelievable, but not as likely to happen. Sure. But I think this team will always be able to rebound from anything that's handed to them because they know they can do it. No question. We finish up the weekend with a, an unusual setup because of some travel circumstances. Illinois State had two games on Monday. Mother Nature made a little greeting to both teams and delayed things just a tad. But, of course, you know the facility at Homer. The field was in pristine shape. The crew did a great job. And you got these two games in. And I, I don't know that uh, you would necessarily frame these and put them on the wall in terms of some of the fundamentals. <laughs> but... Uh, bottom line is you gave up two runs in the two games, and you, you put up some runs, I think 16 more runs. The offense really, top to bottom, continues to crush the ball. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, definitely wasn't the best defensive outing for us. Uh, we, we certainly weren't that crisp in that area, but, you know, luckily, you know, our pitching held on, and, and, um, and then our offense, again, you know, giving us those, that cushion, I think, and, and that's huge. Is, uh, we just get out there and swing the bat, and we swing with some power, and and uh, we certainly had a few going out of the park. So, you know, obviously those kind of things certainly uplift your team. You know, things are good, too, when Hannah Kiyahara connects on that. I mean, she hit that ball <laughs> hard. And you, you love to see a, an individual that hasn't hit a home run in their career. And you yeah. like to see the teammates' reaction. And they, they were excited about that. <laughs> they were too very excited. I think, you know, we always give Kia, we give Hannah a big, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of grief about her size and that she's not very big. And... You know, and she laughs about it and everything like that. But, you know, you could, if coming around third base, the smile on her face was so big when she hit that. And it was exciting. And I think as I saw it going out, I was like, get out, yep. get out. Because I thought it might just hit the top of the fence, but it kept going. And yeah. uh, that was wonderful to see. Uh, 
in terms of performances over the weekend, obviously, as we've talked throughout the show, a lot of different people stepped up. It seemed like I saw Alicia Olney's name offensively yeah. perform really well over the weekend. Any other names you might mention? You know, I, I got to say, Alicia Olney, I got to give her a lot of credit. She's really come on offensively this year, which is what, you know, this is what we really thought we would be able to get from her. She has power. She's got a good swing, and she's really coming on there. You know, I think um, what we're seeing, Tanner Fowler, um, had a kind of a slow start on the weekend, but then got back into the groove again. And, and Tanner's obviously one of our heavy-duty hitters. I mean, she hits the ball very hard, very scary um, offensive player. And then, you know, um, I think really Whitney Arion has been coming on as of late. She sure. had some ups and downs this weekend, but again, one of those kids that's come up for us. Um, Kayla Souls yesterday. I think she golfed one at one point. <laughs> it was so low. It was a changeup, and it was down low, and she just reached out. Line drive to the fence. There you go. You know, get so, out the old seven yeah, iron. Yeah, you know, I'm like, wow, that was wonderful. So, but Kristen Austin, I think, yep. has been the highlight of the year, really, because she has been so consistent, such a a force, um, and I love seeing that from her. Um, she's a great kid, and she's playing well defensively. She's playing well offensively. Just, just having a great year. Yeah, Kristen was in the top 10 nationally in batting average last week, and the new stats have yet to be regenerated, but uh, the cards are doing things well. It's a school record for consecutive wins. An old streak was 17. They've gone 20 and 0, obviously the best start in school history as well. And uh, now you focus on it being spring break, a chance to be with the kids a lot, which can be good and can be bad for everybody, but that means games. And, and yeah, you guys play yeah. Monday, you play two, you play Wednesday at Western Kentucky, yeah. and it's one thing to be 20-0 and 0 and have a target on your back. You play an in-state team, you've always got a target on your back. It should be a good one in Bowling Green Wednesday. It definitely will be. I mean, there's no question um, anytime we're in-state playing. I mean, all of us have a lot of pride in our program, so our teams come with their A game. And certainly, Western has been playing extremely well this year. Um, they have everything in place, I believe, pitching, hitting, and defense. So they're going to be a very tough opponent for us. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to really come and bring our A game if we want to have a chance at winning that game. Um, certainly expect our team to do that. I think this will be a great game. Kind of wished it was here, yeah. not there, but, uh, you know, um, looking forward to, to this matchup. Yeah, another test. No rest for the weary either as the team will jump on a plane, fly to the capital of California, Sacramento. Sacramento State has a tournament. You will see uh, Colorado State, Princeton, along with the host team, and Akron, and, and it opens with Colorado State, team you used to be head coach of. You, you know very well, and I know that's got to be yeah. exciting for you. It is, and, you know, um, you know I, I, I'm excited just to get out there a little bit, something different, um, and, you know, and to see how our team responds to this kind of a week of hectic travel and play, yeah. um, which is similar as we get into our conference play a little more, and so that this is a great test to see what we're capable of doing out there. And, so um, it should be a great weekend. Looking forward to it. Best of luck and safe thank travel, you. Coach. For Sandy Pearsall, I'm Sean Moth. We thank you for watching. We look forward to talking again right here on Cards TV.